me i just gave you an overview yesterday regarding the session like the decision making statement loop statement which is also called as iterative statement or jumping uh, looping statements and then we have the break and continue statements okay see this is how it is so what is this if statement says executes a block of code when the given condition is true if the given condition is false it will not execute okay that falls under else block okay so if uh, let's say now i given i have given the value of a as 10 and b as 20 okay so i'm saying 10 is greater than 20 is that true no it is false right so this false will be present in the else block now if i say 20 as a value and b value i'm giving as 30 okay so 20 greater uh, so let's say i'm giving a value as 30 and then 20 b value as 20 so 30 greater than 20 is true right so then whatever those statements that are present in the if block will be presented Next, we'll be having nested if. So, what do you mean by nested if? If present inside the if will be giving you as nested if statements. So, these all are the syntaxes. Okay, just go with the syntaxes. Now, I'll just uh, by I'll explain you the code so that it will be easier for you. So, how to create a package? Right click, right click on the HKR trainings, click on the package, say control structures. And now let me create. Okay, this is an annotation. Sorry. New class. So what's the class? I can say the class name is simple if. Let me give the values. The same. int i is something like 10 int j is 5 okay so if i greater than j if the condition is true so then go and print print something so what it should print it it should print the value so what value i i want, I want to print so i'll say i value is greater than Something like this. Now let's see. And as Java application, so what you are getting, i value is greater than j. So why you are getting this? Because what is the current value of i? Current value of i is ten, and current value of j is five. So ten greater than five is true. So that is the reason it is entering inside the loop. Okay. If the condition is false, so now let's say I am making it as fifteen here. Now, sorry. We'll make this like this, but let me give J values fifteen. Run as Java application. It is not printing anything, right? Why? Because the given condition is false. So ten greater than fifteen is false, right? So that is the reason. So for making the condition false, then we'll be having else block. So now I'll say class if else example. So let me copy this. So I'll write like fifteen. Okay, so ten greater than fifteen is false. So it will come here after the else block. It says, "Such an order print alone, even condition is false." Okay, so Rana is Java application. <coughs> It is saying given condition is false. Now to understand the logical flow of uh, how it is working, I'll just use the breakpoints. Okay, there are some concepts called as debugging. I'll say debug as Java application. So 
see the current value of i what's the i value now just mouse over on it i value is 10 just come again now j value is 50 okay just step over now what what is happening condition is false right so what did we see and if statement it will be uh, it executes a block of code if a specified condition is true another block of code will be executed if the given condition is false so now this block should be skipped because the condition is false let's see see this has been skipped and directly it has been entered into the else block now again do step over so it will print the value given condition is false okay so similarly just terminate the program i'll just show you for the simple if also now the condition is true here right so let's see debug as java application Just observe, yes, so 10 greater than 5 is true. So it is when entering into the loop, if you observe, okay? So that's how you need to understand. Now, if simple if is done and if else is done, okay? We have the concept called as nested if, if else if also, okay? So what is this if else if? Now, if you have only one condition, is uh, only one condition is false, then you are giving uh, only one else. Right. So if there are multiple conditions that are false, so what do you need to do? So that's where if else if comes into the picture. Okay, so how how do we write if else if or the nested if values for this? So let me create a new class. So what's the class name? Let me name it as if else. Example, something like this. Okay, clear. So this is something which is called as if fell if ladder. Now let me instead of going with the syntax, if else is nothing but having if inside the if. Okay, previously you saw if, and then you have else, right? So here you can have if, then again else if, then again you can have else also. Uh, now I'll say int. Let me give some, give me as marks. So I'll say 50. Okay. So here I'll say if the given marks allocated is less than 50. Okay. So I'll ask to fail the particular student. So I'll say failed an exam, something else. Next. So this condition, we are good with this condition. Now, else if. Because you are not sure with the condition. Because the student will not only get all the students who are just passing out will not get less than 50, right? There will be a uh, few people will be getting 60s, few people will be 70, 90s, 100s also. So for that reason, you are supposed to write this. Marks less than or greater than or equal to 50. Here you are supposed to use the logical and because you are validating two conditions. Okay, so marks less than 60. I'll say this is an order 20 LN. So what's the value? So I'll be getting it as B grade, something like this. Then again, else if. Okay, so 50 greater than done with till 60. So it is still here less than 60. What? He might also get 60 also, right? So greater than or equal to 60. And then here I can say less than 70. What's the grade? If the math is increasing, grade also will be this so which is 70 here so i'll say greater than or equal to 70 and marks less than or equal to 80 and same so here i have to say this b grade okay so greater than or equal to 80 so less than or equal to 90 is giving you a grade Okay, if it is greater than or equal to 90 and less than or equal less than 100, less than or equal to 100, okay, then you'll be getting it as outstanding, which is O grade. Okay, so I'll say run as Java application. It's, you're getting as D grade. Why you're getting it as D grade? Because the value that you have given is marks value is 50. Okay, so value of 50 is equal here. Okay, it is not equal here. 
less than 50 let's say if i give something like 40 or 30 here okay, let me give 40 so now it will be saying it as failed because the given condition is less than 50 will be failed okay now let me give you and validate by giving 80 okay where is my 80 value greater than or equal to 80 is here so i have to get grade as a grade so it will go and it will validate now it will uh, when i say 80 it will go it will check here 80 less than 50 condition is false so it will come out of the block then again it comes here 80 greater than or equal to 50 is no false then again comes here comes here false comes here here it will become true okay if you want to debug we can uh, watch it like this Control S, debug as our application. Okay. Step over. Now, what's the current value of marks? Current value of marks is 80, right? So, given condition is false. So, it is not entering into the system order printer. It is not entering into the block. Next, come again. So, what's the current value? 80. So, 80 greater than 50 is true, but less than 60. It is not true, right? False. So again, it comes again, exiting out of the loop. It is existing. But now if you observe here, it will enter into the loops. Just a order print alone. okay? This is how you need to understand how the logic works. Uh, so there might be student who will also give negative marks. For that case, else you have to print the value. This is a default value, okay? We'll be saying invalid marks. Okay, so this is for nested if and not only nested if you will be also having a case called as switch. Okay, so what is the switch case? So here you, you are having the switch still. So now let me show you how we can write the code for switch case. So switch case and nested if are one and the same, but whereas if you observe the variables cannot be duplicated in a switch case. Not only in the switch, here we'll be having in the format of cases, like K0, case zero, case one, and all. Okay, so you also need to understand that it can work with any kind of a data type, and you also should make sure that if uh, case values cannot be repetitive, okay, the redundancy cannot be happened. So if I say K zero, then it should be K zero only. It cannot be case zero cannot be repeated again. It should be case one. It should be unique, basically. Okay, and so I let let's show. So else block is a default one. So similarly here instead of else block, we will be having a default one that is common. Okay. So for the switch example, let me give this stating that month. Okay, I'll say in the month, let me give us five. Okay, fifth month is May, right? So I'll say string month is equals to, I'm not giving anything, okay? So you can give it in this format, in the format of string or else. You can also give in the format of marks. Okay, you can also print directly what you can do is in the switch case. This is how we have written it. If else if so here write the switch case syntax and then case zero print the max. Then case 80 or uh, case B give this. Okay, so I'll just show you on how it works. Okay, so we can give it like this. Like, let me show you how we can do it with the same code in, using the switch case. So it will be different when you're talking about strings and also when you're talking about the numbers. Not much difference, but in marks, let me give marks value as 90. Okay, this is my switch case. So here I'll be giving some expression. So what is my expression? So the condition that I wanted to validate is marks itself. Okay. So inside the marks, let me paste this entire condition. So I'll just remove this end marks. Okay. 
So what I can give? Case for failed, let me give this, case failed. Okay, so when I say case has been failed, okay, you can give it like this. You don't have to give this also. Marks are, given marks are less than 50. Same. So now here, I, I, instead of else if, I'm just replacing it as and stating D grade. Okay, I'll say given marks. Marks student scored are in the range of, okay, something like this. So you definitely, it's not required. This is not required. So then again here, case C. Also to remember that Java is case sensitive. Yes. So as it is a character, I'm just enclosing this in a single quote. If it is a string, you have to enclose it in a double quote. I'll just show you on how we can do it for month also, so that that will be easier for you. Yes. A create. This for outstanding. Now, just let's remove this. And this is also not required. This is also not required. Okay, here instead of else, we have to write it for. So this is not invalid marks, it should be grade because this is a character that we are trying to do. If it is a number, you can give it as invalid marks. So here you can say instead of marks, let me update it to grade. Let me give grade as A. Okay, so what is the grade? A. So what's the value of grade A? Here it is, so if it's false D, C, B, till here it is not printing. So A, this A value which is given and this is getting matched. So it will say marks greater than or equal to 80 and less than 90 will be printed. Okay, this. And why all the continuation is getting printed is because of the break statement. Okay, like whenever you're not giving break statement, this will print. Let me show you how. Now we will be not, now we will not able to see. Now let, let me run the code. See, yeah, now we are only able to see the marks greater than or equal to 80 and marks less than 90 because I have break the statement. Uh, let me give something like F here. If I give F, I have not used the break statement, right? So from here, whatever the print statements are there, all will be printed. But that will be a wrong scenario, right? Because all of these are printing. For that reason only, you are supposed to give break because the, whatever the condition that you wanted to do, you got that, right? So for that reason, you are using the break statement where it will print the exact condition that is required to you. So when you use run as Java application, now you'll be able to see only one. Okay, so marks less than 80. Sorry, marks less than 50. Why? Because F and F is matching here. Clear? Clear with the switch statements? Okay, so we are done with the conditional statement. I'll also show you on a few programs on how we can do it. On how to write a program for even and odd. 
Okay, so now I'll say even or or so the, no space, just validate that. And here, if you observe, type name is discouraged, okay? Because the first letter should be capital for a class name. It's just a warning, okay? So public study appointment. Now, to understand whether the given number is even or odd, so this is your requirement. Let's say if I'm giving you some number like 21. Okay, so what's the number? I'm, I'm giving number as 21. So defaultly, the base will be 2. Okay, so 2 tens are, it is 20. So when you're getting reminder as 1, this is nothing but a, this is said to be as an odd number. Okay, let's say that I have 41. Okay, two twenties are, it is 40, right? So one is a reminder. So when you're getting one as a reminder, this, this is said to be an odd number. Now two, 10, okay, so two fives are, it is 10. So what is the reminder I'm getting? It is zero. So when the reminder that you're getting zero, then it will be called as an even number. Okay, any number, when you're dividing any number, two tens are 20, right? So when you are dividing it with any number, but the reminder you are getting it as zero, then this, that is said to be even number. If you are getting the reminder as one, that will be an odd number. You will not get any other numbers, right? Like two, three, four, because when you are taking a basis, two, okay, two into six. So two, three is, it is six. So you'll be getting zero. So now six is an even number because it is zero. So when it is said to be an odd number, when you are getting a reminder as one, it is said to be an odd number. And when you are getting zero as an output, then it is said to be an even number. Clear? So for that, let's see on how we can write the program. So when you are observing, when, if you have just observed this, here I gave the number, right? 21, 41, 10, or 20. Okay, so to validate, let me also take some number. Int number is equals to, let me check, I gave 10. Okay, so as this is a condition, right, because you are validating whether the given number is either it should be even or odd. So we are validating. So I'll say if number percentile 2 should be equal to 0. Okay, so what do you, what I mean by this is whatever the number that you are giving. Okay, so number 10, that is percentile 2, then what is the reminder that you'll be getting 0. Correct. So what you'll get if it is zero, if it is zero, you'll be getting it as an even number. So I'll say system dot out dot print ln as even number. Now just observe this. I'm just running the program. So it is printing it as an even number. So uh, also you should make sure that if, if you are only observing in the console, if you are only observing that the given number is an even number, and if you don't know the number value, okay. So in that case, we need to use this plus num. Then we will be able to see even number is Kanaj Java application. Okay, so what we are we are getting it as even number is ten. Okay, now I don't want. Uh, let's say now if I give the number eleven. Let me see what I'll get. So run as Java application. I'm not getting anything. Why? Because here 11 percentile 2 will not give 0. Right. So to 5 side 10, you'll be left with a reminder called as 1. So in that scenario, you should write a condition. So because the condition is false, you should say uh, given number is odd. So then print the value of a number. Okay, now let's run this. So what is the number that you gave? 11. So two fives are 10. So you'll be left with a reminder one. So you'll be getting a number is odd. So what's the value of an odd number? Which is 11. Okay, so that's one. And let's say now, now I hope you understood on how we can figure out whether the given number is even or odd, right? Now, Greatest of two numbers. How we can figure it out like when you're giving the greatest of two numbers? How we can write the code for that? Any idea?
Now let's say my A value is something like 10. Okay, and what is the B value? It's something like five. Okay, so now if I wanted to know in the given two numbers, which one is the greatest? So how I can write the code? This is the condition statement, right? Because we are validating a condition. So I'll say if A is greater than B, sys out, print the value of A. Why? Because when I say A is greater than B, which is 10 is greater than five. So when 10 is greater than five, what, what, what is the condition? It is true, correct? So that is the reason you are printing the value as A, 10. Now, if you wanted to make the condition false, so what you can say A less than B. So when you are saying A less than B, what is the value that you need to print? B value. So here A is the A, is, A number is greatest because it is 10. And now here it will we'll be writing it as B is smallest. And Try to print the value of b by giving this plus b. Then you'll be getting the value as 5. Clear? Now let's try. So int number 1 is equals to 10. You can give like this and then you can give in this format. Number 2 is equals to 5. Or else you can write like this. Int a is equals to 10, comma b is equals to 5. So what is making the difference here? So you don't have to write data type statement again and again. So here, if I say int a is equal to 10, then again, just give comma and write p value. Okay, so if a greater than b, in the loop, say if a is greater than, then try to write the top out dot print the length. A is greatest or largest, whatever. Less A. So now let's try what we'll be getting. And as Java application, A is greatest. Why? Because 10. Now, 600 ordered printer line, let me give. So when you'll get B is greatest, when you are making this condition false, so let me give 15 here. So what happens? So 10 greater than 15. Correct. So when 10 is greater than 15 is false. So what happens? Ten greater than 15 is false. So it will not enter into this loop because the given condition is false. So if the given condition is false, it will come, uh, it will exit this loop. Okay, it directly comes here and it will print this value. Okay, I'll just show you. Run as Java application. See, you're getting B is greatest. Okay, because the given condition is false. So you're getting the B value. Now let me show you by debugging this. Debug as Java application. Just click on the step over. See, A. 10, so 10 is greater than, it is false, right? So if you observe, it is not entering into the loop. It has been entered directly into this 18th line, where the green, which is highlighted in the green color. So now if I click on step over again, then it will print the value. See, B is greatest and B value is 50. Now let me give five. And now let me depot. Okay. So debug as Java application. So when you are debugging this, now let's see. Just step over. Now what's the current value of A? A value is 10. What's the value of B? It is 5. So 10 is greater than 5, right? Which is true. It is not false. It is true. So in that scenario, when the condition is true, if you observe here, it is it has entered. Okay. Previously, what happened? It has been directly entering entered into this loop. It was highlighted in this color, green color. But now when the condition is true, it is entering into this if loop. So A is greatest will be printed now. Yeah. So after the loop has been exited, it is trying to print the next value. Okay, B is greatest. So you have to write this. Because if you if you observe, I'm trying to make uh, I'm trying to fail the condition. 
I want only the condition which is true. So I'm, I have to make this inside the else block. Okay, so run as Java application. Now if you run, just see, you'll be getting only one. You'll be getting either A is greatest or B is greatest. See, you got B is greatest. Okay, now let's validate for A. So I'll get only A is greatest. Clear? So similarly, you can do this for largest of three numbers also. So how you will be doing by using the logical AND operator. So make it largest of three numbers, I have to give three numbers in A, B is five and then C is three. So if A greater than B, logical and A greater than C, correct? So what am I saying? A is greater than B and A is also greater than C. So then what should happen? A value should be printed, right? So A is greatest. So here else if, which we were talking about, if else if ladder and nested if ladder yesterday, right? Now, greater than C and B greater than A. So what happens now when B is greater than both the values of A and C, then you'll obviously get B as greatest. Else. If A is not the greater one and B is not the greater one, so which one will be the greatest one? C, right? Yes. So C is greatest of P numbers. So just click on the Java application. You're getting A as greatest. Why? Because 10 is greater than 5 and 3. Now let me give you 15. Now let's see what you get. You're getting B is greatest. Okay. So let me give C value as 13. So now C is greatest among all of them, right? So run as Java. So you'll be getting C is greatest of all the three numbers. So if you need to understand, just keep the breakpoints else if just double click here. Okay. Debug as Java application. Click on step over. So now when you're clicking on step over, what is happening? Came here, A value is 10, B value is 15. So it is false and this is also false. So it is not entering into the system not ordered printer. And so similarly here also, if you observe, it will not enter into the system ordered printer and because it is false. See, it directly came into the else block. C is greatest of three numbers. Then that's, that's how you are, you'll be writing the code for greatest of three numbers. Now, as we have, we were talking about each statements, which statements are done. 